Remember Peltz? He's the billionaire investor who's more right of center than left. His daughter is married to Victoria Beckham's son, David Beckham and Victoria Beckham's son. Anyway, Nelson Peltz went after Disney pretty hard, and it was great to see because <laughs> he, he has a, a big fund, Trion Partners, and he noticed what we've all noticed, right? The elephant in the room, the fact that Disney is not making any money anymore because it keeps coming up with flop after flop and sequel after sequel. And there seems to be no ingenuity. There seems to be no creativity. There seems to be no there there at Disney. And you combine that lack of creativity with the reality that the media business is drastically changing. This is why we was going to be out of a job. And you get a messed up scenario where the stock price, let's take a look at it today. Moments ago, we were watching it trading around $101 a share and change. Now, that's Disney today. Look at where it was. What was that? In 21, January of 21, it was up around 200 bucks a share. Now it's at 100. Nelson Peltz, smart guy, got in somewhere around 88 dollars a share and then he started agitating and he started making a lot of noise and he ran a whole campaign to try and get some board seats he ultimately lost bob Iger effectively kind of had the board in his back pocket and bob Iger convinced shareholders that this would be bad you know nelson peltz was like basically donald trump you know we're going to scare you it's good versus evil and peltz is evil and he's going to ruin disney and everything that it stands for but Peltz had some good ideas just listen to him here he was talking to jim kramer about what needed to happen at disney in place that works okay we haven't seen one going back to 2011 they began talking about succession with 13 years from them and they haven't come up with anything they've got to get the margins up they got to get streaming right they made a lot of promises and frankly as a shareholder i hope they keep them well okay so not, in, we we're, we're here in restore the magic your document uh, okay, so he made a lot of good Disney points there, and we're going to clip it right there because I'm going to add to what he was also saying because he had previously talked about, in addition, you know, he's like, look, I hope Bob can actually do his job. We'll see. But Bob needs to get away from sequels. We need more creative content. Bob needs to figure out who's next because uh, the other Bob didn't do so well, right? It was Bob Iger, and then it was Bob 2.0, and now it's Bob 3.0, right? So we went to Bob Chapek. And it was a mess. Like, Bob kept his office. The original Bob kept his office and apparently was just meeting with employees and orchestrating a whole thing behind the scenes, sources say, to unseat Chapek. So Chapek eventually left. The stock cratered when Chapek was in charge and Bob Iger comes back like the, the you know, knight in shining armor. But he's got to actually save the company. He has no succession plan for real. I mean, they, they've said they've tapped some woman who's going to do it. She's a former Fox person. We'll see. We'll see. I don't think they have a real succession plan. I don't think they have a real plan to even manage their employees in terms of getting people to focus on what really matters because everybody's obsessed with wokeism. You know, if you don't make a lot of money, think about it, and you just graduated from college and you're trying to pay your bills and you're trying to pay off all those student loans and you think, you know, with your degree in gender studies that the most important thing in the world is making sure that people don't see gender anymore, then yes, you're going to be more committed to making movies that nobody wants to see than you are going to be committed to actually turning a profit because for whatever reason, you're not motivated by profits. I mean, maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's great. I think ultimately that results in the downfall of our capitalist great society and hegemonic power that we are. I don't think that's a trajectory that we should be on or any employees should be on, but for whatever reason, the way they're indoctrinating kids in schools these days and telling them that basically Uncle Sam or Uncle Joe will pay for your education, nobody's inclined to actually work. And so that is the problem we find ourselves in and some of these woke companies find themselves in. Disney's one of them. It's actually a big part of why Rob and I started 76 Research. 76research.com, you know, I keep plugging this, but it's important. I actually think it's really important for you. I did this, you know, not because I saw a business opportunity, which I do, because I think that the research that you get as a consumer is pretty shoddy. And the research that you get on Wall Street is actually often quite great, but it's not directed at individuals. And so it's, it's kind of like, you know, the church, the Catholic church, it's like, okay, the priest is going to interpret the Bible and then it whittles its way down to you. And by the time it gets to you, unfortunately, when it comes to Wall Street and the research you get on Wall Street, it's so convoluted and so tied to special interests, right? You know, 
this company has a stake in the IPO, so we need to pump this particular stock. Like what I wanted to try and do, and Rob and I had thought about, you know, he worked 20 some odd years on Wall Street as a stock picker, as a fund manager for, I mean, running over a billion dollars. And it was his complaint that, you know, too often you had all these outside factors that you had to consider as a stock picker. And so what we wanted to really try and do is create something that's very authentic and of extremely high quality, which it is. I, I mean, I don't think there's anything like this on the market and do this in a way that was very cost effective for all of you so that you could get in for, I mean, it's like nine ninety five a month a month for the 76 report and for an additional $23 a month you can get these model portfolios and you have 10 to 15 stock picks that are our best picks for 2024 in the American Resilience portfolio in the basic income portfolio and in the inflation protection portfolio so you want to try and however you can and re I realize listen you know you're trying to make ends meet you don't have a lot of extra to go around but when you do have a little bit extra, you know what? You, you got to look after yourself because Uncle Joe's not going to be there. You know, he's not. Trust me. I mean, those lefty kids that think that they can go and protest all they want and not actually pick up a book and get a degree in anything real and support themselves, they think he's going to be there. And I got news for you. He's not. So how do you plan your future? This is what I wanted to be able to create. So I do. I push it every day because I passionately believe in this for you. And there's no incentive that we have other than to just be extremely transparent and honest about what the best opportunities are for you right now as an investor. That's all we care about. And we're not like, you know, okay, buy this, buy that, sell this, sell that. It takes a lot for us to actually make these moves. So once we figure out our 10, 15, we do make changes. And in fact, we just made one recently because one of the stocks had gone up so much from the level we recommended it at that we were like, okay, it can't be that great a percentage of your portfolio anymore. So this is a time to take a little bit of money off the table and reinvest it into something else. And so we put another stock that we really believe in there. But I, I'm telling you, listen, guys, there's a lot of inflation embedded into the economy. That's not going away. One of the ways to combat that, I know we talk about gold and that's certainly part of it. And, and by the way, we talk about gold in the inflation protection portfolio, but it's also being invested in the equity markets, in the stock market, right? You want to be invested. You want to be invested for your future. So this is a starting place. I think it's a, a relatively easy roadmap to be able to follow. We have a brand new report coming out tomorrow on the 76 report. You can go to 76report.com. You can go to 76research.com. Do check out the model portfolios. It's really, it's really well worth it. It is good to see you guys. You know what? I'm going to do my sort of type and talk here. This is how you know this is a live show. This is how you know. Um, and I just want to make sure that you, you do have the handle so that you go and you sign up. If nothing else, make sure you get the free stuff. Um, there you go. 76research.com. And, uh, and, and I'm just reading some of these, these, you know what, um, great to see you all. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment, David. I always take it. <laughs> I always, always take it. We got a big crowd here today. Uh, George, I'm sorry to hear that. Like George Elliott saying, you know what, it's hard to buy anything right now. And I, I, I listen, look, but that's why you want to be in the market, right? I mean, we've been talking about NVIDIA. Look at NVIDIA. It's up like another 3% for goodness sakes today. Another reason to go over at least to the YouTube channel at 76 Research. Rob and I have done a lot of reporting on NVIDIA and they're sort of the good, bad and the ugly. I, I, I would say that there's still a lot of opportunity there that you need to understand. They had the stock split, which in and of itself really shouldn't matter, but I think it's making NVIDIA more attractive to a lot of mom and pop investors. And so there's this wave that's coming along. I am a big believer in, in AI for the future. I know it's scary, but I was writing about NVIDIA two and a half years ago as being a real opportune player in this new metaverse that we're, we're seeing, which is the function of AI, et cetera. And I actually envision a day <laughs> You know, Disney, like they're good for some things, right? I was at Epcot a few years ago and I loved this because I envision a day where, for better or for worse, you could go into a room in your house and shut the door and put on your goggles, right? And then just be immersed in, in an experience, kind of like the ride Soren, if you've ever been on it, or um, 
they, they well, Soren is great, right? Like you're flying over the ocean at Disney at Epcot Center, and you've got the salt air in your face. You can smell the salt air. You hear the seagulls. And I thought, gosh, like, is this the next generation of media? It very well could be, but it's going to take a lot of AI, which means it's going to take a lot of semiconductors. And it means you probably want to be looking at technology right now. You just do. I don't think this is like, you know, sneaker.com or any of that stuff from the dot-com era where you had all these crazy companies. It was like, if you had a dot-com next to your name, suddenly you were a success. This is real technology. And it's moving so quickly. I, I look at even this show and what we're able to do and what we're able to accomplish live now. When Drew and I first tried to do this about a year ago, it was really hard. Like we couldn't actually manage the whole live stream, et cetera. Now we can do it. Like we have the technology here. So this is the future, ladies and gentlemen, and it's just going to get better. I won't just be reading your little comments here. You know what? We're going to, we're going to have you on. Like you'll be able to, you know, all join and we'll all be on video. It'll be actually pretty darn cool. So this is the future. It's not the view. Thank you very much.